I'm Rob from Smartburn Innovations. In today's video, I'm going to demonstrate a practical method for integrating a lithium iron phosphate or Life PI4 battery into your boat's power system, all without the need for purchasing costly components or embarking on a major electrical overhaul. For several years, I'd been contemplating the switch to lithium. However, the standard route to a pure lithium setup put me off. It typically requires extensive alterations to charging systems and the addition of equipment like a DC to DC charger. Given that my boat relies on solar, wind, prop shaft and alternator for charging, none of these systems were prepared for lithium batteries. As a technology architect, with over 20 years in the field, the solutions pitched by the marine industry for adding lithium struck me as needlessly intricate and costly. Why should switching to a lithium battery, a simple change in the energy storage, require such a disproportionate response? Let's take a step back and consider our progression from wet cell lead acid to gel and then to AGM batteries. Each transition came with its unique charging requirements, yes, but none required a full-scale electrical system upgrade. Lithium batteries, despite what you may have been led to believe, should not be an exception. After recognising the complexity of the marine industry's standard lithium integration strategies, I took it upon myself to find a solution that was both effective and uncomplicated. My search led me to discover a reputable German engineering firm that has engineered what they called a smart lithium battery. Their proposition was strikingly simple. The lithium extension battery, known as the LE300, could be connected directly to the existing 12 volt lead acid battery system. When I read their statement, unlike switching to pure lithium batteries, no charging technology needs to be changed. I knew I'd found the breakthrough I was looking for. They also wrote, the LE300 can compete with the highest safety standards. Consequently, it holds a wide range of certifications, including the E1 mark for secure use in motor vehicles. Great. So how do they do it? So I read on. The principle of the hybrid system considers the low cost lead acid battery as a long term storage and backup while the lithium battery handles the daily cycles. So they are using a hybrid system that is made up of our existing lead acid or AGM or gel that is connected in parallel with a lithium battery. Intrigued by this hybrid concept and being an avid DIY enthusiast, I sought ways to replicate this configuration on my own. This journey brought me to a Dutch website that not only endorsed a similar hybrid solution, but also delved into the intricate science behind it. And if you're wondering whether this is just a niche or a passing trend, consider this. I found a thriving community on Facebook where hundreds of boat owners have successfully implemented a hybrid lithium setup. The collective experience and knowledge in this group are testaments of the viability and growing popularity of the hybrid approach. I've included a link to these websites and Facebook groups in the video description below. It's been a year now since I embarked on this venture, not just in theory, but in actual practice on my own boat. I installed a lithium hybrid system with two lithium battery banks that are seamlessly connected in parallel with an AGM battery. And all my existing charging sources are happily connected to this hybrid battery without having to change anything or buy any new components like DC to DC chargers, nothing. I live aboard and have sailed thousands of miles with this hybrid system in place and it has worked perfectly. The way it functions is quite straightforward. The charging profiles of lithium and lead acid batteries complement each other, like two partners who have different strengths that work together well. With a lithium hybrid solution, you can utilize all of your existing chargers as they will essentially perceive the system as a lead acid battery. And since it seems like you have a lead acid battery, you don't need to change any of the existing wiring or buy any new equipment. This is the beauty of the lithium hybrid solution. 
the lifespan of both lithium and lead acid batteries is optimized in this setup. Lithium batteries undergo daily cycling and avoid prolonged high charge states, while lead acid batteries experience minimal cycling and remain fully charged. One significant benefit of the hybrid solution is the built-in redundancy offered by the lead acid component, preventing abrupt power loss. In case of low voltage cutoff or failure in the lithium system or its BMS, the system immediately defaults to the lead acid battery. Despite the reliability of lithium batteries when correctly managed, they rely on a BMS, which is susceptible to damage from environmental factors such as seawater, electrical surges and corrosion. In these situations, the robust simplicity of a lead acid battery is invaluable. Can you imagine sailing on a dark stormy night close to land with lots of shipping and your pure lithium solution switches off? This is very possible. No lights, no IIS, no navigation systems, no autopilot, nothing. A hybrid lithium solution offers protection against such scenarios, ensuring your essential systems remain powered and operational. By the way, when I refer to lead acid batteries, I'm including both AGM and gel types as well, since they all utilize lead acid chemistry with variations in the form of the electrolyte. And when I refer to lithium, I am referring to life PO4 variants only. So here is how I set up my lithium hybrid system. Prior to this, I operated with a one, two, both battery switch setup, managing two AGM battery banks. I have now designated the life PO4 battery to bank one, and the AGM battery to bank two. And I importantly always keep the switch set to both. I configured my BMS to cease charging the lithium at 14 volts and to cut off discharging at 12 volts. When the lithium battery is offline, the lead acid battery automatically takes over all charging responsibilities. I've noted that others have successfully implemented this system without a physical switch since they can remotely deactivate their live PO4 battery through the BMS app on their smartphones. When integrating a hybrid solution with lithium and lead acid batteries, it is crucial to ensure that the lead acid battery is in good working condition. Incorporating a deteriorating lead acid battery would negate the benefits of the hybrid system. The size of the lead acid battery need not be large. The essential aspect is its health and functionality. In my setup, I opted for a new 100 amp hour AGM battery because it was the right fit for my existing battery box. However, depending on the available space and power requirements, a smaller capacity battery could suffice. Careful attention to the alternate is necessary with the lithium setup, as it may work harder and risk overheating. Some regulators may reduce alternator power if it reaches a certain temperature. If you've installed our smart boat engine temperature sensors, you'll be monitoring the alternator temperature already. If not, a simple laser temperature gun can serve as a cost-effective tool. Most boat setups have, have sufficient voltage drop between the alternator and the battery, preventing the alternator from overheating due to max output. I recommend checking the alternator's temperature. Typically, anything above 100 degrees Celsius could indicate overheating issues. If you encounter this, one simple solution is to extend the cable length to the battery, which reduces power output through resistance. Alternatively, if your regulator is equipped with a temperature sensor input, attaching a sensor could help manage the temperature. For an advanced setup, the smart boat alternator sensor, which is integrated with Home Assistant, could automatically adjust the field current, which I'll explain in an upcoming video. I also recommend joining the dedicated Facebook group I mentioned earlier. It's an excellent resource with a wealth of knowledge and a community eager to assist with any questions you have. One thing to note is that the major marine vendors and their affiliates often don't support the hybrid solution because they can't sell you extra gear or services. On many Facebook groups and forums they manage, I've noticed they don't even allow discussions about hybrid systems. They tend to dismiss or block posts on this topic. The marine industry is quite small and the standards they set usually come from what the major marine vendors suggest. These vendors have a say in these standards because they are the ones selling the equipment. 
There's no bad intentions. It's just how things work when a few have a lot of influence in a small industry. So there you have it. This hybrid battery solution offers a practical, cost-effective and reliable way to enhance your boat's energy system, marrying the robustness of lead acid with the efficiency of life PO4 batteries. It's a testament to the ingenuity of sailors and DIY enthusiasts everywhere. If you found this video helpful and informative, I would appreciate if you would hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Your support means a lot and helps me create more valuable videos like this. Until next time, hasta luego.